Hello and welcome to the 12th week of season 22, Season of the Witch, starting on November 7th, 2023. So for week 12, let's get going with our legacy rotation, starting with the Forsaken expansion. Ready if you are. Let's see what's out there. The Dreaming City this week is at a strong curse level, which means Spectrevenge can be found in Rio Silvia and has the Dark Monastery mission for the next week. The Blind World features Taken enemies and the Plague Ainamina. The Ascendant Challenge this week will be Ouroboros, which can be located over in the Affiliates Rest Lost Sector on the Dreaming City. Next up, the Shadowkeep expansion. On the moon, the weekly story mission is in the deep. The Trove Guardian and the Wandering Nightmare, Jax, Claws of Ziva Wrath, are both located at the Hellmouth. And the Nightmare Hunts this week will be Crota, Despair, Fogoth, Fear, and Ghoul, Rage. For our Beyond Light expansion, on Europa this week, Praxis the Technocrat will be the Empire Hunt, Cadmus Ridge will be the Eclipse Zone, and the Exo Challenge will be Safeguard. For the 30th Anniversary expansion, Dares of Eternity Legendary rounds are Hive, Fallen, and for the final round, Valister Arc. The Loot Rotation will be on Week 1's rotation, with the Scatterhorn armor set and the Wild Hunt armor set being available. The weapons available this week will be the Arc Lightweight Frame Bow, Arsenic Bite 4B, the Arc Adaptive Frame Heavy Grenade Launcher, Blast Batu, the Solar Position Frame Linear Fusion Rifle, Corsair's Wrath, the Void Waveframe Energy Grenade Launcher, Deafening Whisper, the Kinetic Adaptive Frame Hand Cannon, Dire Promise, the Kinetic Position Frame Sidearm, Enigma's Draw, the Kinetic Lightweight Frame Submachine Gun, Escape Velocity, the Arc Adaptive Frame Pulse Rifle, Giant 7 Rifle, the Kinetic Position Frame Submachine Gun, Friction Fire, the Void Position Frame Scout Rifle, Royal Chase, the Kinetic Aggressive Frame Hand Cannon, True Prophecy, and the Solar Adaptive Frame Fusion Rifle, Timelines Vertex. For the Witch Queen expansion, the Witch Queen weekly story mission is the Ritual, where the modifier is Fire Pit, as well as Barrier and Unstoppable Champions. Also this week you will have Altar of Reflections Catalyst, and Altar of Reflections Pact. The Wellspring activity has been updated to include a featured Throne World weapon, Veritas Armor, and a weapon pattern as its rewards. For the Lightful expansion, the weekly mission is Downfall, with Extra Shields, Lock Loadouts, and Extra Champions, Barrier and Unstoppable Champions, Solar Threat, Scorched Earth, Kinetic Overcharge, Void and Solar Surges, with an Overcharge Weapon, and Galvanized on Hero Difficulty only. The Partition mission will be Hard Reset, Contest Mode Enabled with Barrier and Unstoppable Champions, Arc Threat, Scorched Earth, Pestilence and Martyr Modifiers, Arc and Strand Shields, with Void and Strand Surges. And the Vex Incursion this week will be Liming Harbour. In addition, the weekly Lightful Reset also refreshes the Pinnacle Drop for the Node Override Avalon Exotic Mission on the EDZ. For the Season of the Deep, all three fishing ponds are now exotic all week. Raids and Dungeons the Crota's End Raid Challenge this week is the fourth encounter, Crota, son of Oryx, called All for One. Crota's Overshield must be destroyed in full within about three seconds. Plus, if you complete the weekly challenge on Master, you'll get an Adept Weapon. The Adept Weapon you get is a random drop, but works on a knockout system. You will get a new one with every challenge you complete every week until you've unlocked them all. The Root of Nightmares Raid Challenge this week is the first encounter, Cataclysm, called Illuminated Torment. This is where every Tormentor must be killed by a player with a Field of Light buff. The King's Fall Raid Challenge this week is the 5th encounter, Oryx, called Hands Off. Players must not kill the same Ogre or Light Eater Knight throughout the encounter. The Vault of Glass Challenge this week is the 1st encounter, Confluxes, called Wait For It, where every Yellow Bar Wyvern must be killed as they sacrifice themselves to the Confluxes. The Deepstone Crypt Challenge this week is the 4th encounter, Tanix, called The Core 4. Guardians must dunk all 4 cores before each DPS phase. The Garden of Salvation Challenge this week is the 4th encounter, Sanctified Mind, called 0 to 100, where you must fully fill each conflux with 30 motes within 10 seconds of initially banking the first set of motes. And the last wish challenge this week is the fifth encounter, Riven, called Strength of Memory, where guardians must not shoot the same Riven Eye twice. Your pinnacle raid will be the Vow the Disciple over on the Throne World, which means all challenges will be available for each encounter. These are the first encounter, Acquisition, called Swift Destruction, where guardians must kill all champions within a few seconds of each other on all rounds. The second encounter, the Caretaker, called Base Information, where runners cannot pick up more than one stack of knowledge on each run. The third encounter, the Upender, called Defenses Down. This is where each player cannot kill more than one Taken Knight in total. And the fourth encounter, Rolk, called Looping Catalyst. This is where Guardians must not lose the Leeching Force buff before the damage phase. 
Also, with the Vow the Disciple being the featured raid, this does mean that you can farm the final boss for a chance at the exotic pulse rifle collective obligation. The pinnacle dungeon will be the Grasp of Avarice over on the Cosmodrome, and our exotic mission rotator will be Operation Seraph Shield, with the Revision Zero exotic pulse rifle being the main reward. Craftable weapons available from this mission include the Stasis Aggressive Frame Linear Fusion Rifle Fire and Forget, the Arc Lightweight Frame Bow Tripwire Canary, the Stasis Aggressive Burst Pulse Rifle Disparity, the Arc Adaptive Frame Trace Rifle Path of Least Resistance, the Solar Aggressive Glaive Judgment of Kelgoroth, the Void Rapid Fire Frame Machine Gun Retrofit Escapade, the Void Precision Frame Hand Cannon Icalos HC, the Solar Rapid Fire Frame Shotgun Icalos SG, the Solar Rapid Fire Frame Sniper Icalos SR, and the Arc Aggressive Frame Submachine Gun Icalos SMG, with the Warmind's Avatar Armor Set. Next up, Challenges. We have now had all 75 challenges over the first 10 weeks of the season. So, as a reminder, if you complete 72 out of the 75, you can get a large pile of Bright Dust to spend at the Eververse store in-game. Here's a few that you might have missed that you might want to get completed in the next few weeks. Filamentary Magic. Defeat 100 targets with Strand, Arc or Solar Supers. Earn bonus progress for defeating Guardians. 4. Challenge XP Plus. Trial by Firing Squad. Win multiple rounds in Trials of Osiris. 4. Challenge XP Plus Plus Plus. Bright Dust and a Trials Weapon. Fleeting Glory. Complete Crucible matches in the competitive playlist. And bonus focus for wins. 4. Challenge XP Plus Plus and Bright Dust. Bounty Conjurer. Complete three daily bounties during the Season of the Witch. 4. Challenge XP Plus. Darkest Nightfall. Complete any Nightfall on Hero difficulty or higher. 4. Challenge XP Plus, Bright Dust and a Nightfall Weapon. Mod Collector. Unlock 12 Artifact Mods. 4. Challenge XP Plus Plus and Bright Dust. And Lost in Legend. Complete a Lost Sector on Legend or Master. 4. Challenge XP Plus and Bright Dust. Hello. 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 As a reminder, your daily Lost Sector will show you a flag outside which will give you details of threats, shields, champions and exotic armor you will find inside. But if you're new to the game or using an alternate character and can't find the flag outside, you will have to run through the Lost Sector normally to have it show up on your map as a Legend slash Master. Which you can either do solo or with a fire team but you'll only be able to earn a chance at the exotic drop when completing solo. Tuesday, November 7th will be Sepulchre on the Throne World for Exotic Helmets, Solar Threat, Arc and Strand Surges, Solar and Arc Shields, Fire Pit Modifier, Overcharged Fusion Rifles with Barrier and Unstoppable Champions. Wednesday, November 8th will be Extraction on the Throne World for Exotic Boots, Arc Threat, Arc and Strand Surges, Arc and Void Shields, Raider Shield Modifier, Overcharged Glaives with Overload and Unstoppable Champions. Thursday, November 9th will be Metamorphosis on the Throne World for Exotic Gauntlets, Arc Threat, Arc and Strand Surges, Arc and Solar Shields, Scorched Earth Modifier, Overcharged Machine Guns with Overload and Unstoppable Champions. Friday, November 10th will be K1 Revelations on the Moon for Exotic Chess, Void Threat, Arc and Strand Surges, Arc Shields, Fire Pit Modifier, Overcharged Machine Guns with Barrier and Unstoppable Champions. Saturday, November 11th will be K1 Communion on the Moon for Exotic Helmets, Solar Threat, Arc and Strand Surges, Solar and Void Shields, Arachno Modifier, Overcharged Linear Fusion Rifles with Barrier and Overload Champions. Sunday November 12th will be K1 Crew Quarters on the Moon for Exotic Boots, Arc Threat, Arc and Strand Surges, Solar Shields, Hot Knife Modifier, Overcharged Glaives with Barrier and Overload Champions. And finally back round to Monday November 13th will be the Concealed Void on Europa for Exotic Gauntlets, Solar Threat, Arc and Strand Surges, Void and Solar Shields, Arachno Modifier, Overcharged Trace Rifles with Barrier and Overload Champions. Lead the way. Our 12th featured Nightfall of the Season was Seer's Face Off against Dark Blade Kelgroth, Risen from Bone in the Highest Battlegrounds Mars, where you have a chance to get a Pinnacle Engram if you complete the Nightfall with a score of 200k or more. This Nightfall is free to play. You'll be able to earn high-end gear for your characters including the Nightfall featured weapon, exotic gear, enhancement cores, enhancement prisms, ascendant shards and adept Nightfall ciphers. The higher the Nightfall difficulty, the more common the drop will be, with the featured weapon and exotic gear being uncommon at hero difficulty to being common with Ascendant Shards in Grand Masters. Legend and Low Nightfalls will have 5 Barrier and 6 Unstoppable Champions, with 40% Solar, 40% Arc and 20% Void Shields. Masters and GMs will have 8 Barrier and 9 Unstoppable, with 40% Solar, 40% Arc and 20% Void Shields. Your Nightfall modifiers are Hero Difficulty, Maximum Effective Level 1765, Matchmaking is available. Enemies have extra shields. 
Champion's Foe, you will face Barrier and Unstoppable Champions. You can either use Intrinsic Exotics, use a subclass debuff, or unlock anti Champion mods from the Seasonal Artifact. Solar Threat, 25% increase their incoming solar damage. Empath, Enhanced Radar, take increased damage from melee. Overcharge Weapons, weapons overcharged from the Seasonal Artifact are active in this activity. Kinetic Weapons do increase damage when your subclass element matches an active surge. Solar and Strand Surges, 25% bonus to outgoing solar and strand damage. Overcharged machine guns, 25% bonus damage with machine guns. Galvanized, combatants have more health and are more difficult to stun. Legend difficulty, maximum effective level 1815, includes all previous modifiers except galvanized. No matchmaking. Equipment locked, you will be unable to change your equipment once the mission starts. Master difficulty, maximum effective level 1820, includes all previous modifiers except galvanized. Champions mob, this difficulty adds more champion enemies. Grandmaster difficulty, maximum effective level 1815, includes all previous modifiers except galvanized and empath. Join in progress disabled. Extinguish, if your fire team falls in a restricted zone, your team is returned to orbit. Limited revives, gain additional revives by defeating champions up to a maximum of 20. Contest mode, which caps your power level to make enemies more of a challenge. Fire pit, when defeated, acolytes spawn fireballs that cause damage over time. And chafe. Radar is disabled. To combat champions this season, you have access to subclass counters as well as a choice of intrinsic anti champion artifact mods, which are anti barrier auto rifle, anti barrier bow, unstoppable scout rifle, and unstoppable fusion. You also have exotic weapons and armor that can help with intrinsic mods as well. For anti barrier, the kinetic bow wish ender, the kinetic linear fusion rifle arbalist, the kinetic pulse rifle revision zero, the solar energy hand cannon Ariana's vow the Solar Heavy Sword, the Lament, and the Titan Gauntlet, Second Chance, which gain a second charge of a shield throw melee, which becomes shield piercing and stuns barrier champions. And for Unstoppable, the Kinetic Fusion Rifle Bastion, the Kinetic Hand Cannon Malfeasance, the Kinetic Scout Rifle Touch of Malice, the Solar Energy Sidearm, Devil's Ruin, the Void Heavy Bow, Leviathan's Breath, and the Hunter Gauntlet's Atheris' Embrace, which have a chance to stun Unstoppable champions with their empowered weighted knife. The Nightfall featured weapon to attain this week will be the Solar Precision Frame Bow pre Astyan Axe 4. The pre Astyan Axe 4 has a base impact of 76, accuracy of 65 and stability of 40. It can roll with collective action, opening shot and explosive head, with enlightened action, perpetual motion and archer's tempo. It has the origin trait of stunning recovery where if you stun a champion you partially refill the magazine, trigger health regen and improve your recovery for a short duration. Vanguard Vindication, where final blows with the weapon grant a small amount of health, and Wildcard. Final blows with the weapon have a chance to create experimental submunitions at the target's location. Lord Jack Spring's Team Scorch the Crucible for the 12th week of the season. Team Scorch is a 6v6 PvP mode where all players wield a Scorch Cannon. Equipped weapons and abilities cannot be used in this game mode. Movement abilities, e.g. lift, jump and glide, sprinting and emotes can be used. Players are forced to use a Scorch Cannon that cannot be dropped. The Scorch Cannon has 100 ammo which is replenished on respawn. Matches have a 7 minute timer, players have a 3 second respawn timer, guilds give plus 1 point each, the first team to reach 60 points wins. If the timer runs out before the team reaches 50 points, the team with the largest score wins. The players current and longest kill streaks are shown at the top of the screen below the score. And Supremacy will also be available in the Relentless Crucible playlist. Supremacy is a 6v6 PvP mode which is a variation of Clash. Every Guardian that falls will leave a class based quest behind, and collecting those is the key to winning each match no matter if they were dropped by a defeated enemy or by a fallen comrade. Securing opposing Guardian's Crest will net the team one point, and collecting a fallen teammate would deny your opponent that point. Focus on recovering the Crest to earn points and defeat the opposing team. And available in the Crucible Labs playlist this week will be Relic. Relic is a 6v6 PvP party mode where all players wreak havoc and destruction on their foes with a Relic weapon. Relics include the Aegis Shield from Vault of Glass, the Synaptic Spear from Season of the Risen, and the size from Season of the Haunted. Each player charges their personal relic energy by defeating opponents with their normal loadout. Upon reaching full charge, players can acquire the relic from the Relic Depot. Defeating relic holders and using relics to defeat opponents earns points for the team. Delightful! And Saint 14 will be back at the weekend with Trials of Cyrus Dominion, bringing with him a whole host of rewards for players who do make it to the lighthouse and open the chest. These include the Heroes Wake Exotic Ghost Shell, the Valiant Memory Exotic Ship, the Survivor's Journey Exotic Sparrow, a new armor set, and the new Trial Shader, Bloodline Feud. 
Trials of Osiris Dominion is a 3v3 PvP high stakes game mode with a twist of a capture point. In Dominion, two teams of three go head to head in a battle for control of a capture point. Teams can either work together to capture the control point or eliminate the enemy team to win the round. Only available from Friday Reset until Tuesday Weekly Reset, Trials gives every player the chance to show off their PvP skills to obtain some of Destiny's most sought after weapons and armour. Players that compete in Trials of Osiris will have all of their games tracked to a passage card a ticket purchased from Saint-14 in the lower hangar of the tower. Winning rounds and matches in Trials of Osiris will grant exclusive weapons, armour, pinnacle gear, masterwork materials and even adept gear for the most skilled players who can reach the lighthouse with a flawless ticket of 7 games won and no losses. 5 round wins will bag you the match for your passage card. By competing in Trials you do have a chance to pick up 2 pinnacle engrams from playing each week, one from 50 round wins and the other from winning 7 games. These do not have to be done all in one go, but you do have to complete them before the weekly reset. And making it even more enticing, there will be double XP available in the Trials playlist this weekend. That is amazing. Also, don't forget with us moving into the final few weeks of the season, this is your reminder to start collecting all of your Season of the Witch Pass items, any items left over from Season of the Deep Season Pass from Bungie.net, plus your reward track items and engrams from Banshee44, The Gunsmith, Shax, Crucible, Zavala, Vanguard, Drifter, Gambit, and Saint-14 Trials. Grab these before the end of the season as they will reset and you will lose all items when the new season starts. Don't forget you can also start hoarding those bounties to get a leg up on XP and artifact progression for next season. And that's it for week 12 of Season of the Witch. I art Guardians. Guardian down.